Now, I just landed, um, it's just up there flying a little bit with the, uh, the Super Duty. It's got the, uh, the turbocharged Viking engine, 180 to 200 horsepower, depending on how we set it up. The purpose of the flight was just kind of to document uh, through little videos what we're seeing for um, output of the turbocharger's uh, temperature and what we're seeing after the intercooler. So the hot side and the cold side of the intercooler. Uh, as far as a reference to that, it's always fun to then now refer to the Rotax uh, 915 because uh, not that one system is necessarily uh, better than the other or, or whatever, but just to have some numbers to, to reference. The 915 and the Honda turbocharger systems are different because Honda has the uh, ability to you know make the whole engine liquid cooled and they went with new technology to cool the exhaust manifold uh, directly <clears throat> with liquid and then also cool the turbo through hoses going through the turbo so it is a oil and liquid cooled turbocharger versus the uh, Rotax then running a um, non-liquid cooled turbo and um, relying on the oil for for uh, for that now uh, running the oil temperature lower than in the turbo of course is also maybe a little bit of an advantage because you don't have to rely on a really hot turbo in the spool down time and taking care of the turbo as much with worrying about cracking and, and all that so but as far as efficiency cooling the uh, turbo ahead of time seems to be the way to go because you don't have to run quite as much air through an intercooler to cool it down. And these are the numbers we came up with, uh, or I came up with during this flight. And you can you know, see them in the video, but then reference them to the, just for fun, to the 915 um, Rotax. And the numbers for that uh, pulled off the internet is uh, 200 Celsius off the turbocharger, or basically 400 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, 60 to 70 Celsius on, on the other end of the turbo or on the intercooler after it's been cooled, which is then the uh, 140 to 160. So basically 400 coming out of the turbo and 150 going to the engine versus the uh, numbers that are coming up. Let's just take a quick look at the actual, actual gauge that we're going to be looking at so we know what, how it works. Well, there are two needles, so you got, it's in Fahrenheit, 0, 30, 60, blah, 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 <clears throat> up to 300. And there's a green needle and a red needle. So the red one will be the hot side out of the turbo, and the, the green one then shows the um, temperature after it goes through the intercooler. So there, there's always going to be a spread between these, the two needles. So that's what we're looking at, and on we go. So the first one is at 35 inches, just five inches above the maximum you can get out of a non-turbocharged engine. And the hot side of the intercooler is 150 and going into the engine is 100. So very efficient at this point. at 40 inches and really no difference, uh, 150 and, and 100. And we're jumping up to 45 inches of manifold pressure and we see 180 coming out of the turbocharger and um, 120 going into the engine. All right, and then 50 inches of manifold pressure, we see 210 coming off the turbo and 130 going into the engine. So still very efficient. So 
So the conclusion then is it's just a little bit more friendly than traditional airplane engine turbos. Those that have flown like Aztecs and you know whatever with big cast iron turbochargers that were just oil cooled and air cooled um, know the extra maintenance that was associated and sometimes aircraft consumer report would even say don't ever 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 <laughs> buy uh, an airplane with a turbocharger but that's kind of changed now with this setup because first of all the parts of course are very inexpensive being automotive <clears throat> and uh, if you look at some of the youtube videos of the direct injection and the turbocharging combined and uh, you look at the advantages of that lack of detonation and all that and then you add the fact that uh, honda has added this um uh, integral exhaust manifold with cooling inside uh, you can see that uh, even some of the plastic parts that are on the, uh, the turbine side of the turbocharger wouldn't have any problem holding up and uh, 130 degrees going into the engine at 52 or so inches of manifold pressure that's uh, pretty imp pretty impressive and um, other than that it's you know it's just a high performance engine you have to have an engine monitor where you can watch these things and put alarms and stuff like that. But if everything is uh, in the green, then it's a very safe setup.